I like to say hello to everybody who's out there. Uh, the weather has been quite kind to us, hasn't it? It has. Uh, it's getting a bit dark now, but hey, what the heck? Uh, what am I going to talk about? Well, as per usual, weapons. It'll be weapons, as Bragi has uh, so delicately shown us. First of all, we have a sword. This is one of Bragi's, one of many of his. Uh, it's a reenactment one. It's a double-edged weapon. Originally, this would have been very sharp, although the point is rounder, and the Viking was more into slashing rather than uh, stabbing. You have the uh, the, 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 fuller. the fuller down the middle. I forgot for a minute. Uh, I can't remember everything. Uh, this isn't a blood channel, as people say. It's actually a way of keeping the metal but making it lighter. So why do you think we have that idea of it being a blood channel? Is that a much later thing in history? Yeah, people think about They make up their stuff and... Do we blame the sorts. Victorians and Hollywood for that one? I think more Hollywood than Victorians. Uh, modern day bayonets have that channel and it's mis called a blood channel when I was in the TA. They say, this is the blood channel. No, it's not. It saves weight and it also, inside the scabbard on a modern bayonet, there's two bits of metal that hold it in place so that should you tip over it doesn't fall out. And of course they don't make that kind of ridiculous noise in Hollywood movies when nah. you're putting a sword out. Let's demonstrate that. There See, you go. I get no noise. But I can understand why so that people can associate... I'll just put that down. Indeed. So that people can associate... Um, uh, people need to be told, you know. Now, your sword is a bit different, isn't yes, it? Yes, I've got to undo my peace tie. Ooh. And that is another thing we'll talk about in another TikTok or yeah. YouTube shorts video soon, I think. Well, this is a particular one. Can I actually like to talk through what, what's so different? Well, this is a pattern molded blade. Now, it's not a Damascus steel. A lot of uh, pattern molded blades were not Damascus. And this is a early pre Viking blade, you could say, because of their length. Yeah. A lot of the early Viking swords were much shorter than later on. And it has a very nice edge of steel, as you can see. And this was made in the 1950s after World War II, I believe, by a Danish blacksmith and was found by Paul Bins. I do think it was Paul Bins that found it. I can't remember everything. Was this actually a result of uh, Roman influence that it's shorter? Probably so, and also the lack of material around at the time. Well, I don't think people understand just how much effort goes into making of a sword it's not you know sort of sharp as well yeah no, we don't normally use this in combat and normally take it into battle which is purely a, a sword for demonstrating and yeah. it's a bit of bling and they say one of these by hand will take around about 600 hours to make from digging out the bog iron to smelting making the rods as well so well even today it would cost quite a lot of money I and it also imagine. has a pattern rolled uh yeah section on the top, the pollen and mm. the cross guard is also yeah. pattern rolled with a walnut handle. And of course walnut is very, very hard to get these yeah. days. It's very rare wood. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a handsome piece of kit you've got there. We're very lucky. And it's in a scabbard and not a sheath. Now the yeah. difference between a scabbard and a sheath, a scabbard is always solid and a sheath is just a flexible leather now I holder. Didn't know that. Yes, it, there is a big difference. See, you learn. you're never too old to learn. No, never. But. Uh, yeah, you know, we've got a final array of weapons here, and... Uh, yes, I'm thinking about getting a couple more swords in the future. Yeah. So, like you haven't got many. Well, there's a couple from Armour Class, which I don't have in my collection. Right. And they've got money sitting in my bank account doing nothing. What you give it, mate? Oh, stop <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll that. One thing I may do in the, in the next six months or years is actually buy some more kit. So you yeah. can have some brand new made kit and we're going to try to sort some deal out with a manufacturer so that we can review those products mm. they give us a good discount there's a couple of people in mind that i've got in mind for that well, and we'll get you some new trousers yeah. and a couple of new tunics well my my actual tunic is what over 20 years old well some of these are i mean these are newish to me yeah. but you know some of our kit is years old yeah but it still works that's the thing i'm drinking tea all right i've got water down here so. Can you imagine Vikings on coffee? Yeah, been up all night, raving, and then they have coffee. Ooh, pity the monastery. So if you've got any questions or comments about Viking weapons, and we'll go through what we're wearing, and sort of read your comments yeah. when they come through. Sure. And we're going to live stream on here for about an hour until just past 7 o'clock. 
uh -huh. and then everyone's going to walk home. Yeah. You can even catch the bus now with your no light bus, bus pass. There's a bit of a laugh on this. Uh, when you reach a certain age, as I have, you get a free bus pass. Indeed. Which has a photograph. Indeed. <laughs> now, Broggy, bless him, he got it through the computer. But I look like a refugee from a garden centre, <laughs> as I've got this pixie hood thing on. Just as a Viking. Yeah. And <laughs> I haven't tested it out yet, but uh, I'm sure the, the results will be interesting. Yes, we'd we'll have to take a photograph of it and, and dock your information just to show people in a video. It's very, very funny. And it makes me think, are you the only person, the only retired person in the whole of the United Kingdom in the Great Britain with a bus pass picture of themselves dressed as a Viking. I wouldn't be surprised if I am actually, yeah. But we'll see. We'll see whether the bus conductors query it. Now we have a comment here from Charles Shearer and he says Hi, hello Charles. from Colorado. Oh, Colorado. Colorado, yes. Nice to see you guys from America. Day, oh yes, we always welcome our American friends to this channel. And uh, I'm lucky I've been to America twice. I haven't. Don't take part in battle reenactments. I, I went in 1999 and I took part in the anniversary battle of the Battle of uh, Chattanooga mm. and then, although the Confederates gave it another name I do believe, and then in 2001 I was very privileged to take part in the 138th Battle Reenactment of Gettysburg and that was a fantastic and awesome experience. So what does he say? He just says hello. Oh, hello! All the way from England. Hello. So, talking about swords, yeah. would every Viking have a sword? No. Would a sword be a common weapon? The sword is like the elitist weapon. It People don't realise how expensive a sword was in those mm. days. Um, hang on. Whoa. And the surprising thing that people don't realise, yes, that would be worth probably a village and all the people in it. Oh, yes. But apparently the scabbard is worth twice what a sword is. Really? Yeah, um, I found that rather peculiar. Where did you read that then? Uh, it was when I was at university. Oh, right. uh, I can't remember the exact source of it, but... I mean, I mean, in length of time, a sword takes a lot more time oh, yeah. and material to manufacture. So I'm surprised mm. by that. Well, I, was, I always thought it was just an iron ring they put the sword through, but I think that was an early reenactor's job. And did, did all scabbers get painted with nice designs like you see today, yeah. reenactment? Or is that a misconception? Well, short answer is we don't know because they've rotted away. Yes, it's a shame. Yeah, we know they had a sheepskin lining because the lanolin, lanolin uh, in, the, in the fleece oils the blade. And keeps it from rusting. I think I've had this one about 15 years this sword yeah. and it's uh, really nice. It, yeah. I like how the Baldrick is on this one yeah. compared to some of the others, how it goes over your shoulder. Yeah. It's, and there's something very nice about having a sword in your hand when you're marching. But when I was doing 19th century reenacting you could tell that I used to be a Viking because I always had my hand on my bayonet. I could not stop doing that because you're so naturally used to putting your hand on your sword all the time aren't you? Well it's also the fact that you don't have pockets you notice men naturally put their hands in their pockets. Uh, we have found that swords have got wear on the pommel where the hand is Yes, you can see it. that. Mm -hmm. So we have a comment here from Roman Biscotti. Hi Roman. That's Tanji to you. Hi Tanji. It says, hello dear, boop, with a unicorn emoji and a purple heart and an alien. And mm. um, we have a comment here from Sindley and Miley Nilsson and it says, hey, from Norway. Hello. Hello there. Great to have you on the yeah. channel. Nice to, and uh, oh yes, it's always nice to have all these people over the world watching us. Yeah, and it's nice that Tanji still remembers us, which is great. Oh yes, and we just love carrying on the Viking tradition, don't yeah. we? Which is a, a big aspect about about yeah. this channel. It's carrying on the Viking way of life in a way. It's also to show that international friendship. Yes, you know, it's the internationalism. Now Roman says hello, dear Bruggy and Eggle. Hey, and she says hello, Charles and Sindri. And men like holding their swords, yes. Who were matron. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Say no more. Yeah. I mean, we are a, a, a family friendly channel. Yeah. So, and it's nice to get my tablet working again so we can see your comments. Oh, right. There's a problem with using it, you may not know this, Eggle. If you've got the screen on view on the other side, mm -hmm. you get a 720p resolution compared to what we've got now, which is HD at 1080. Mm -hmm. Now, right. that's just gone over Eggle's head, that hasn't it? <laughs> I'm glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Now you know, children. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And we have filmed quite a few more videos today, some for the YouTube short mm. uh, videos we like making. Because the thing about the minute videos, you know, it's, it's uh, nice to have that option to do these short videos. And what I like about it is variation. Yes. You know, it's 
nice, obviously, to do the longer ones where you talk about. Yes. But the short one, it makes you think more and invites comments. And yeah, you know. Yeah, we will be trying some 15 second videos on the short uh, program because. I know 15 seconds isn't a lot of time. Tell me about it. I, know, we, I mean, I use a little trick. I'll, I'll speed up the video. So you can have a 30 second video. I can speed it up and you get into that 15 seconds. So, and another thing, you know, you, you, may, you may not be aware of this, but I was always against short videos on mm. this channel because one downside about a short video, it lowers your overall attention on your videos. Well, it's but, like you say, especially since COVID, people are trawling through and it, yes. you have to grab them there and then. Well, I, I think a lot of it's about YouTube trying to compete with TikTok. And, you know, you don't have TikTok or a smartphone. It is very addictive. You go on mm. there for two minutes thinking, oh, I'm just going to go and have a look. And you go watch a couple of videos. And before you know it, three hours have gone past, Eggle. You've watched a thousand videos, left some really cool comments. I do leave some really cool comments on the TikTok videos we watch. And, yeah, uh, it's horses for courses, course really. So. I mean, you know, you come in... You've been in all day because of COVID, and you flick through. Oh, I like the look of that. Ha ha ha! We'll move on. Oh, well, there's a robin over there. Look, oh. sign of Thor on good luck. Oh, there he is. They yeah. say that uh, the robin got his red breast when when he landed on the cross of Jesus, and the blood of Jesus landed on the robin. But he's also say associated with Thor, yeah. and the robin gets his red breast from Thor, the god, because of course Thor is a redhead. Now, yeah. carrying on the subject about Viking weapons, now. You haven't got a sword, what would be the most common type of weapon you may have next? Uh, if you can find it. Oh, there's an axe here. Oh no, this would be the most common. Yes, really? Uh, a club? A club, because you think... Are we going clubbing tonight, Eggle? Woof, woof. The thing is, you imagine your army is made up of basically tenant farmers. And all these weapons cost a lot of money. Even a faithful axe or a scrammer's axe. This you can fashion out quite quickly and it does the job got good worm now this would be the next probably common weapon because it's a domestic axe as well you know chopping firewood and everything but even this amount of iron because it would have been iron yes would have been expensive it would be a major investment I mean, we often forget that metal in the Dark Age and the Viking times was classed as a precious material. Yeah, oh. You know, if you think of it, like, you think today of precious materials as gold and silver and, and gems, but in those days, your metal was also precious. And the average scrammer sax or sax would be this size, which is pen knife size. Not this size then. No. That'd be too big. That'd be for your lords and things. But this, yeah. this is what you eat your dinner with. Uh, you. Well, you know, it could be. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't like to get stabbed by it, but you know what I mean. Oh, no, nobody would. Well, I'm sure there are but people who would. Just it? talking about knives. Mm. I like to often appear with a shaven face. How would they have shaved in the dark ages? Would you just simply have got a sharp, very yeah. sharp knife and just gone down your face yeah. like that? Sharp knife, a polished bronze or brass thing. Well, to what do you think about that? But uh, mostly people would have beards. Ah. Uh, but you could shave. I mean, you think the ancient British, the sign of the ancient British was a big moustache. Yes. So they would have. We, there are Roman razors even we've seen. Uh, yes, of course so. Yes, I like the uh, that uh, folding Roman knife with multiple tools. I've always wanted to get one of them. Well, the Swiss Army knife. Well, it's it's the equivalent of yeah. in the Roman age. I'm just trying was, to. I was just looking. There was a pigeon. Oh right, you can have that for your dinner. Have you ever eaten pigeon? Yes, many years ago. It's quite pleasant. Yeah, is it? It's always not peasant. <laughs> oh. Peasant. No, I was on a course uh, selling insurance. It was very different from what I expected. Trying to get back to the chat, so just bear with me a minute. The ah. trouble, trouble was everyone was complaining about it and I ate it. And I just so we've got some more comments here. Hi. So, Roman Biscotti says, I'd love your dad dancing. Thank you, darling. Yes, I uh, put out two videos yeah. yesterday on Eggle's Guide to Dad Dancing. <laughs> we like to have fun in this yeah. channel. It's not all serious stuff about yeah. weapons and the Viking Age. If you can't laugh at yourself, you know, it's, I realise it, you know, and have a good laugh. And being a buffoon is fun. So I'll just go back to the comments. I'm just making Shay Shack to a uh, moderator. If you don't mind, Shay, you always need more moderators on yeah. the channel. Those are the people with the blue uh, spanner, Eggle. And they can monitor our chat in the future, just in case you get a troll come in and leave some troll-like comments. No, 
Yeah, Let's go to your yeah. comments. Um, Shay Schechter says, The Viking Buddies. Ooh. And Roman Biscotti says, Hello, Shay. And Roman Biscotti says, Yes, be careful of the TikTok rabbit hole. Yes. I mean, you do see a lot of bullying and people with bad attitudes on TikTok. I mean, God, like, good hope and it's right on us. Um, but that is one of the downsides of TikTok. It can be very abusive. You don't get that on YouTube so much. They're more to be pitted than scorned, where you've got to do is just to check it. Even I know that. And the Roman says, it's great and looks like dinosaur bone, that club. Yeah. And I'll talk about that in a minute where I found it. And uh, Shay Schechter says, love those authentic clothes. That's what we do, baby. Yeah. I recently found this. I was cleaning, I got just around the side of the house. There was a massive wood pile. And I was going through it, uh, and I found this, I thought, and I lost this years ago. And he means massive, I tell you. Yeah, it is a big wood pile. Yeah. It's got a couple of bits of wood worms, so I'm going to try to preserve this. This was the first club I ever made out of ash. It was an experiment. I had a knot at this end, a root knot. And they are very effective. And, and I, know yeah, I wouldn't like to be bashed on. Oh, well, yeah, noggin. bang, you know, you're not done. Oh, you fracture someone's skull. I mean, uh, you do read about in the Viking sagas, in some of the battles where uh, a warrior will go and he hasn't got a weapon in mm. all... He's got an axe, somehow, but he'll go to the wood and chop down a branch and make a club. Oh, I read that a few times in the sagas. You use whatever you Magic can. Foot. Oh. Ow! And the next. So, what would be the next weapon after the club and the axe? Um, club, the axe. What's a spear? A spiocta. Hang on. If I get the top of my head. Yeah, we could have organised this a bit better, but never mind. Ah. Here we go. This is a, a reenactor's one because it wouldn't have the knob on yes. the end. This is uh, would be sharp. Certainly wouldn't be doing this. But I think this is actually, if we're being honest, to me, this is a hunting spear. Probably so, because he goes in and comes out. And this one was made by a blacksmith. It's probably, yeah. but probably, probably made this one. There's some amazing uh, craftspeople yeah. out there. You may not get away with that for using the battle because they may reject that being yeah. blacksmith made. But this is why it's got a wonky handle because not all spear shafts would have been straight. If you're in a yeah. hurry to get into battle. Or you know there's a battle coming, you would shaft up your spear and whatever you could find. Well, they would also have straighteners in that <coughs> you heat it over a fire and then you can straighten it yes. up. Yes, and the other bit of the steam wood. It would uh, possibly be like that. So, I don't know, I'll put that on the floor before somebody's eye gets cut. Oh, yes. Oh, you have it in my eye. Uh, oh, I'm, matron. I'm now Odin. Oh, oh don't tempt it. <laughs> Oh. And would you tie yourself to a tree for nine nights and, and nine days to learn the rules and lo lose an eye? Trust me, there's a lot more to that. Really? Than, well, uh, uh, we'll get into that in another day. They actually have a different way of doing it, which I went through. Okay. Now, in another live stream, we'll talk about some of the most common weapons, because we always think about swords and axes, mm. but they would have talked anything they would have used, you know, garden instruments, pitchforks, yeah. anything, the peasant. Leg bone of a horse or even anything. It's what you can use. So Roman says, would it have been common for Vikings to use ropes, chains or a whip as a weapon or not so much? Well, I think if you're in extremis, you would use whatever comes to hand, be it a stick, rope or chain. You don't want to die. That's what it, your top line is, isn't it? Oh, yes. Using the chain yeah. as, as a weapon is very ghost ridery. Oh, yeah. You've got to rock it around your hand and smack somebody with it. It's... It's whatever keeps you alive, I guess. And what is the quality like of this live stream? I always like to ask that question. We do like to offer a, a quality view oh, right. of the live stream. That's a new one, isn't it? Crossing yeah. my arms with a stick. Well, yes. You yeah. do cross your arms a lot. But it's a natural thing to do, though, isn't it? Keep <coughs> warm. No, it's but not. In body language terms, it just means you're very defensive. Yeah, well, I'm the youngest of five. And, yeah. uh, I tended to get a bit of walloping from time to time. Oh, yes. It's like people who smile at me. Yes. Usually when they smile, it usually means <laughs> next thing they're going to kick you. <laughs> I, yeah, right. I nearly used a very rude expression. But... Well, let's talk about Viking shields. How common were they in the Dark Ages, in the Viking times? <sighs> well, I mean, again, it's a status thing. You use anything you can, you know. Uh, I don't know the exact numbers, obviously, but uh, <clears throat> I have heard of people using, I've said it before, wicked. Yes. Yeah, you know, basket weaving. Uh, how common that was, I don't know. And would they have covered that shield with leather, you think? Mm, would, would that be an option if you had the leather? I suppose an option, but if you're a peasant or a slave. Now down the farm there is a, a willow wicker maker, so I think at some point we'll make commission one. 
be interesting, wouldn't it? Mm, there you go. Now, we've got some more comments here. So, uh, Roman says, it's good quality, but some wind gets piled up on the microphone from time to time, but we can still hear you and the lovely birds. <laughs> we do get some lovely birds around here, and I like to feed them. My dad likes to watch the birds. Yeah. And we have a comment here from Rich Hitch. So hello, Rich. Oh, oh indeed, he's always around, he is. Yes, I made it live. Thumbs up. Ooh. Hope you, you're, you gentlemen, I uh, hope you're well, gentlemen. Yes, yeah. we are indeed. We're groovy, baby. Yes, I'm getting to the stage where I need glasses. Yeah. And uh, we have a comment here from Dumnonium Warrior, and he says, hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, Dumnonium Warrior. And Roman says, hello, Rich. Hi. And Roman also says, hello to Dumnonium. Mm. And uh, Rich says, hi, Roman. And Dumnonium Warrior says, hi, all. Well, this is a good chat shop, isn't it? <laughs> right. we, we have got such a lovely audience and well, fan base. Well, it brings people together, and that's what it's all about. Yes. Isn't it? We have our opinions, right, wrong, or whatever. Oh, yes. But, I mean, you've got people talking to each other across the world, and that's yes. got to be a good thing. And by talking, we'll, we'll make this world a better place. Yeah. As you know. Churchill used to say, it's better to jaw, jaw, jaw than to war, war, war. Yes. And, you know, I'm not his greatest fan, but he, I, I agree with him on that one. Hmm. But, uh, oh, look, there's a fly in my tea. Am I not going to drink that? All right, there's some water down here if you want it. No, it's all right. It is water, folks. I've got, got some shandy upstairs. Ah, and interesting. Do you, want, do you want to explain what a shandy is for anybody that does not know? Uh, well, for those of you who don't know, shandy is sort of half beer. Usually bitter, yes, with lemonade on it. Yeah, and on a hot day, it's very refreshing, and it's also, you know, it's not that alcoholic. So no, it's just a nice, refreshing drink on a warm day. I don't know whether I'd advise children drinking it. But oh, it was two in the morning last night. I was thirsty, and I thought I'd have a shandy. Two o'clock in the morning, I was in the land of the fairies, snoring away like a good one. Yes, well, that's one of the things about older people I'm jealous about, is that, A, you go to bed early, and you wake up early. Excuse me, it's usually about one o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. then I'm reading. Yes. So it's about two before I go to bed. But... I often struggle to read, I don't have the energy some days. I get to a few pages, and, and it knackers me out. Well, I'm reading about Field Marshal Haig. Oh, right. That's that, and put you to sleep now, Will. Oh, yes. Um, Roman says, that's why I always put a lid on my cup, so no bugs get in. Yep, yes. you're a wise lady. Very wise. So I'll have some nice cup of tea later now, on. Now, here's the thing. Yes? In Spain, they put a, a little saucer over the um, drinking vessel, and that's how they sort of ended up putting bits of sausage and stuff on it. Oh, right. Uh, so you got a snack with your, with your drink, but you didn't get flies in it. I think I'm turning to Lancashire, because I keep drinking tea out of my... Uh, my, you know, the, my plate when it spills over. Oh, like right. compo from after summer wine. Oh dear. I remember when I was a lad, I used to drop the papers off to these two old ladies, and she always used to pour her tea into the saucer. Yes. And she'd half smoke a fag and then nub it out. Explain what a fag is to anybody that's not English. Sorry. For some people, a fag is something very different. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, in England, a fag is a an abbreviation or a slang term for cigarette. Yeah, you 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 be down the street and somebody, hey, up, mate, can I have a fag? <laughs> yeah. uh, what I don't like is when someone says, can I nick a fag off you? And I don't smoke, but yeah. uh, you know, my mate would say, uh, Mitland, remember Mitland? Yes, yeah. you've got your legs broken. <laughs> I I smoke a pipe or cigars. I will take snuff. Yes, now I'm not a great cigarette smoker. We've got some more comments. From, one from which hit. I always look forward to your videos, guys. Hope we can all have a chat over. A shandy one day, I go. Yeah. Oh, yes. That'd be groovy. If you ever in Derby, let us know. Yeah. And Dumnonium Warrior says, I'm a spear user in reenactment, but don't use a shield with it. What's it like to use a spear and shield? Ah, now, I have done both. Yes, yeah, same here. Uh, spear, I found it awkward with a shield, but what I used to do was use a, a, a long spear with a, uh, what do you call it, a cross piece on it. Uh, wings. Wings, that's it. And I would use the shield wall as my shield, and I found it very effective. Like this one here, that's oh, a yeah. wing spear. There that's you go. a wing spear. And what you do, you use, you don't need a shield uh, because the guy in front is your shield, and you reach over and you hook the shield and stab. Um, I've probably said this before, but when I was at York, there was a young lady doing a similar thing with an axe. And I tried to get her, she tried to get me, and she had a big smile on her face. But uh, 
we got several, we were on opposing sides, but we both got a healthy score that day. Yes, let me just demonstrate in the background, you a single spear. Now, if you've got a shield and a single spear, it's, it's very so effective. Key. If your single spear is not too long, yeah. you can still use it. But if you're trying to use a nine foot spear, it gets to the point where it's too long and you can't use it. Mm. So what your shield needs is a strap. So there's a little secret a lot of reenactors use. They'll have a strap from there to there. Yeah. And then they'll have a little loop here. And it's a little loop you basically hook your thumb into. And by doing that, you'll keep your shield to your body. And you also, it, it makes it easier to use a double-handed spear with. The trouble is, you know the long strap? Yeah. I was, uh, I forget, I think it was Wales. And this guy, he was a big newbie, sorry, a beginner. And he dropped his shield and it wrapped around his neck. And I had to hold the front line of the enemy back yes. whilst I pulled him up to get the shield strap off. It's one of those tasks I've not done on completed with put some straps on our shields. Yeah. At some point I am going to do that so we can demonstrate a double-handed spear yeah. and using a little loop to your hand. It's like a sling, isn't it? Yeah. And don't forget, you also need a good pair of gloves to protect your hand as well. Yeah. But I still remember that poor guy uh, who I won the heroic course, thing. You know, you've got to be careful of the shield because, you know, on one occasion the rear got killed by a shield in yeah. Viking rear well, They are why, dangerous. That's why I did it, because he was choking. It was the colour of your tunic. Yes. That's my one heroic action in reenactment. So, um, go back to your comments. So, Raymond says, Have you got have you got any merchant dice? I think I would love to have a Northworthy Saga mug and t shirt. Mm. Yes, at some point in the future, I will look into signing up to a merchant dice mm. company. And in YouTube terms, they could call it merch eggle. So, if you hear the term merch, it just means a pigeon. It just means um, merchandise. Sorry, there was a pigeon sitting on the fence there, taking a great interest in what we were saying. <laughs> oh, he's coming now. Yeah, well, I put some feed out the other day, and they got some my, some of my fat balls out. <laughs> I am not even going to comment on that. Even, <laughs> even the pigeon's flown away. Oh, matron. They love fat balls, don't you know, the birds? Anyway, for more comments. So, yeah, let's talk about merchandise again. We will get into that in the future. Yeah. I just feel at the moment we're still a little bit too small channel wise yeah. and uh, we've just got to find a good company to sign up to and they'll do all the work and then we're going to put some of our logos like Woof Woof Baby on a t-shirt and have an, have, we'll get your bus pass photograph and have that on a t-shirt. Oh god it looks like a refugee from Snow White. So go back to some of your comments so Rich Hitch says yes Roman North will be merch for real. Ooh. Yeah we promise we'll do that. Yeah. And Roman's done three emoji signs of a, a, a mug, a t-shirt, and like a vest. Mm. So we will get into that in the yeah. future. And Charles Shearer says, As for Dark Age blacksmithing for the Norse, do you think it was more a secretive stroke guarded profession, mm. or just that the barrier for entry was too expensive for a hobbyist to do as well? Well, you also we have equivalent gods in charge of blacksmithing. Now, one of the things I think they guarded their secrets because we used to find, well, we still do, lengths of iron that have been forged into a bar, and you have to have a knowledge to form it into actual objects. Well, of course, so yes. And I think that was a safeguard to stop the amateur, because you imagine that could ruin your trade and your reputation. So you know, uh, currency bars they were called. Yes, well, this is why blacksmithing was passed down by generation mm. by generation, so that they kept their secrets. Because, you know, if you've got a bar in the fire and, and you know, you get too hot, it will spark mm. and your metal will just melt away like that. So you've got to have all these skills and knowing what colour when your metal is, when to heat treat it and so forth. So a lot of it would have been passed down and I think there would have been a degree of secrecy to it. But also, you know, you, you could learn such skills. Well, I mean, Hemdale uh, got a metal working, really. Uh, sort of descendant of Vulcan and people like that. That it, if you uh, don't know about blacksmithing, and suddenly he's getting these marvelous swords, and it's not just swords, it's like axe heads, nails. People forget nails they all have to be forged by hand. Oh, yes, one of the most commonest things yeah. ever made apart from chain. Yeah. But you know, having said that, if you don't know or never had an idea of how it's done, 
It would be amazing, wouldn't it? I mean, from a reenactment point of view, it's not the most easiest thing to get into. First of all, you've got to try to figure out how you're going to have a forge. You could have a wooden structure mm. and you could have sand as a layer to just basically to forge on. But you've got to transport all that. You've got to know what kind of animal to have and what sort of hammers. Well, this is your subject, isn't it? I mean, I've seen the equipment you've had. Well, master mirror chest is one oh. the key chest to go from and then copy the stuff from, and the tools from that, which I do have one or two copies of. Okay. Um, I've always wanted to get together a master mirror chest. It's a long, long time ambition of mine. So we've got some more comments. Harper Walsh says, greetings from Ireland. Hello there. And uh, Roman says, welcome Harper. Ooh. Antonio Pieria, I think yeah. I hope I pronounced your name right, says great channel. Well, thank yeah. you very much. We do aim to please. Yeah. And Roman says welcome. Antonia, Antoni. Anthony. All so, oh, right, it's Ant. I can't read. No, it. you can't read about your glasses. And um, we are Antonio says well. just saw the Vikings 1958 film. Great. That isn't is it? a great film, that. Considering when it was made, it's mm. quite accurate. I mean, we've still got the cross garter, and we've got the Norman castle, but that's to show the Saxons differentiated from the Norse but for its time it was pretty good and the characters yes. actually existed oh right yes so, I believe that yeah yes, it's one of my favourite Viking films I oh. mean you see some of the more modern ones mm. and they're really terrible so um, so Roman Biscotti says you're not a small channel for merch yeah. Spring Company is a go for people's merch Oh. So I'll try to remember that. There's a few uh, companies I've seen that you can sign up to merchandise and they basically mm. do everything for you and then they just give you a percentage of the profit. Do you see that flying over my head? Then? Yeah, it would do. <laughs> you know, or, or, or like, a, like a raven, it's just got over yeah. his head. And uh, Roman says, I'll, I'll, I buy merch from YouTube channels with less subs than you have. Really? Oh, right. Mm. I just want to think about I was going to try to get into it last year, but with COVID and everything else, it just got in the way and yeah, well, other things are taken over. You've got one or two things to worry about than that, haven't you? Now, which hit says, brilliant t-shirt idea, Broggy. Mm. A t-shirt with Eggles bus pass on. I <laughs> need one of these. <laughs> Can you? Oh, it's upstairs. Yes, it? It, well, I'll have to take a photograph yeah. and include it in a video because it's so comical. I mean, it just shows you my, my, my comedy genius, doesn't it? Only I can get a bus pass with a bloody garden gnome on it. <laughs> seven grumpy you go, the seven dwarf. Um, Rich Hit says that garden of yours looks like a great place for a future Viking gathering, Braggy. Mm. Hog roast and all. Woof. Well, yes, it's, it's big enough to build a long house in. Yeah. If or, we had the money, I, I would buy one from Germany and have or, it shipped over. Or have a short house. A short house. <laughs> a short house. <laughs> something else. And, <laughs> Uh, Harper Rose, hello from the Viking city of Dublin. Hello. Oh, yes. Been to Dublin, fantastic place. I have too, awesome yeah. place. Uh, lovely food there. They're, I love what they do with mashed potato. They yes. don't have chips. No. What they do is they make a big bowl of uh, mashed potato, about the size of a tennis ball, drop it in hot fat. Oh. Woof, woof, baby. You guys have really got it sorted. I've not had my breakfast yet. You're making me hungry. Yeah, I'm really ready as well, actually. Um, what are you going to have tonight for your dinner? I was going to drop in at the co-op and have a look, see what tempts me. Oh, the one near five lamps? Yeah. Well, there was an offer on about two pizzas and four bottles of bud. But, uh, yeah, for ten pound. Five. Five? Yeah. Oh. So I was tempted to put a pizza in the freezer and cut the bottles of bud. And do you want to explain what the co-op is for anybody that does not know on this channel? It's the cooperative society that was formed uh, in the Victorian period so that working class people could afford to feed themselves and it was of a certain quality. However, today they've got a bit above themselves yes. and we have multiples from Germany, which are excellent, uh, who do stuff a lot cheaper. There's apparently a new Swedish uh, shopping shop going to start putting out shops in England, I think I read the other day. Was it Netto? Maybe, I forget now. I remember Netto from York. Now we've got some more comments, we do love reading your comments. So, yeah, Ro Roman says, yes, which it would be great. Mm. That's referring to the T-shirt with your bus pass on. Yeah. You'd have to maybe censor some of your information, like when your birthday and stuff. You know, you don't end up being doxxed, do you? Seven hundred and fifty-four, mate. And uh, Roman says, ha, 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 Eggle bus pass will be on everyone's Christmas wish list. Yeah, well, oh, you yes. do that. I would love that. And uh, Rich Hicks says, one of your favourite comments this will be is, Woof, woof, baby! Oh, yeah. That's out loud. Yeah. We'll have that on a t-shirt too with Eggles' smiley face. 
Well, I have to say, uh, that came from Rick Mail. Yes, the late uh, and late. great Rick Mail. He was a fantastic guy, and he did it on the Black Adder uh, videos. But, uh, yeah. But, and Roman says, ah, you could make dog biscuits and call them woof woof baby dog treats, doggy yeah. treats. Hey. You like a dog, don't you? I love dogs. I love pussy cats even more. Do you? I'd love a pussy cat, but I can't have it where I live. Well, one day, if the channel gets successful and we can give you a good wage, you might want to buy a house. Woof. Imagine that, Eggle. Could you imagine yeah. having your own little house? Oh, well, big house. Yeah. Would it be a bungalow? I don't know. Depends what I can afford. Yes. I mean, uh, I've been brought up in big houses all my life, apart from my but This is a fairly big house, but we don't tend to show it on camera. Huge. I mean, I think it's fairly easy to figure out where I live. Ah. Anyway, moving on from that controversial uh, comment, um, which hit says, do you drink from a tankard or a horn eggle? Depends what I'm drinking. If I, and here's a, something that uh, you might like. If you're drinking mead, mm. drink it out of a horn. It tastes so much better. Yes. If I'm drinking beer, I, which I don't drink a lot of, because I'm more a wine and brandy chap, uh, but if you drink ale or beer out of a pewter tankard, that tastes great. But I would recommend a horn for mead every time. Yes, I am slowly collecting wine bottles because very soon I will be bottling up some of the uh, mead my father made in 1977. Jeez, that's And good. would you like a bottle yeah. for your Viking ceremonies yeah. and ritual use? Of I mean, the stuff I've got is it's cheap. It's the Rolls Royce of mead. Yeah. I had some of them a couple of years yes. back, I remember it. I, I took a whole gallon to camp when I was in the Civil War Society. And at one point there must have been about 30 people following me around. It was that nice. Yeah. So, uh, and I do miss that society and I hope the ACWS, that's the American Civil War Society in the UK, are keeping on strong. Yeah. I keep thinking about going back and filming some content for them. Well, have a go. You know, I mean... I can't at the moment, I can't get out. No, obviously <laughs> not. But, you can't know, escape. There will come a time. So, uh, Rich Hit says, it's your catchphrase now, Eggle. Woof, woof, woof baby. baby. Yeah, I use it a lot. I don't know. It just happens. It's if I can't think of anything to say. Is it an onset of senility? I don't know. I hope not. Yes. But, uh, we'll have to do a song, a Woof, Woof, Baby song. I'm sure I could write one. I well, mean, there is that, um, was it, a high, Ice Ice Baby. Yeah. Not to tell them about the video I did earlier when I scared the hell out of you. Oh yeah, this lad here says, oh let's do this, and oh, okay, I'll do it. And he's right behind me and he's, Bruh! I nearly fouled my britches. <laughs> you nearly died just... of a heart attack. Well, this is it. That's going to be a very funny 10 second video, that is. I'm the wrong age for that, you know. He could have ended up... Yeah. And earlier, on a TikTok video, we pretended to be dogs. Woof. <laughs> Running around. Yeah, that was uh, a bit of an eye opener. Wasn't Although it? The, uh, the, the FU Tony video, has, has not gone through for our TikTok. I hope it will be approved because that will be comedy genius. That well, if it doesn't, it's hypocritical with some of the stuff you've on there. Isn't well, it? I know. Have you ever been on TikTok yourself? I don't, I don't think you have. No, TikTok is, as far as I'm concerned, what little kids say about a watch. So, uh, Roman says, I could see Eggle living in a fancy yurt. Yeah. Have you ever stayed in a yurt? I don't even know what a yurt it's is. It's one of those round. Um, Ha ha oh, well, a roundhouse. Well, it's like a roundhouse. You know, in like Tibet and in Siberia, when you have all these horse tribes, a yurt is basically oh, know, a yeah. round building they put up in a couple of hours. Well, They're very trendy now at holiday homes. When I was a student, I dug in in Wales, a place called Castle Hentley's, and they reconstructed roundhouses. And I can tell you, the roundhouses there, I assume they're still there, are fantastic. In this weather, they're nice and cool, and in winter, they're nice and warm. And it's surprising. We got over 30 people in one uh, building. I've just seen a pigeon drop an egg from the sky. Nice. Does that mean a bowel movement? No, an egg. Uh, it's landed out of nowhere over there. Anyway, moving on from that uh, subject. Yeah, and in that video, all I said was, Ah, dragon! <laughs> he grabbed himself. Those of you who can lip read will know what I just told him. Yes, yeah, so we try not to swear on this channel. We do, we do mm. on TikTok. Uh, I got no problem on TikTok swearing, but we try, we try to be professional. Anyway, moving on from that uh, uh, controversial moment when I nearly gave Eggle a heart attack. I nearly filled my bridges. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't want to do you know 
resp- you know, and get you back alive on camera. And Artificial to, respiration. Yes, I couldn't think then. My yeah. mind went blank. I'm glad you felt that way because it's like a log jam, isn't it? You, yeah, get, you do. And you know the word and it mm. won't come out. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Welcome to Simon World. Oh, yes. Eggle World. That yeah. could be a theme park. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. And the next comment, <laughs> please. They're going to want that now. Yeah. Anyway, Roman Biscotti says, Ah, oh, no scaring Eggle. That's that yeah. loud. Now, Rich Hit says, your dancing the other day was just the best, fellas. Keep the comedy gold coming. Factual and funny. You guys rock it hard. Well, we mustn't take ourselves too seriously. No. Uh, there are academics who would never do it. Well, well, yes. I don't think you're ever going to see Dr. Jackson Crawford. Brilliant, brilliant channel. Do something like that. But well, you never know. You never know. We may inspire him. Hmm? But then one again, the, you know, we're not going to teach you how to speak Anglo-Saxon or Viking. Or one not. of the cleverest guys is dead now, bless him. Uh, you used to have a good laugh. Not Stephen that clever, Hawking. then. Stephen Hawking. Oh, Stephen Hawking. Yeah. Lovely man. Extremely intelligent, and you'd see him on the TV series. Um, oh, I've forgotten what he's called now. Sheldon Cooper's in it. Oh, I forget now. Yeah. Well, never mind. Little Britain. No. no. Big Bang Theory. Oh yes, I've never watched that. Oh, it's great. Any I've, good? Yeah, I've got DVDs of them. All oh, right. So, um, let's go back to some more of your comments. Uh, Roman says, ha ha, the pigeons are egg bombing you. Huh. Well, I, it's a few metres away, but it was close. I, to be honest, I didn't know pigeons did that. Yeah, well, it's definitely a pigeon. Well, well I'm not going to argue with you. It seemed all a lot of effort to get rid of it. I thought they were to breed, but... Well, you know, it probably came out of a nest unless it came from somewhere else. Woof. Now, um, Rich Hitch says, do a blackadder at the end of this live video and chase one, of, one another off into the distant background. Uh, I don't think you've got the energy for that. No, we've been at this rather a while, actually, since... Well, what I do want to do is film a Benny Hill kind of a sketch in Derby when we get loads of people chasing around Derby, you know. Yeah, they might get... do, but they might end up beating me up. I also want to do down St. Peter Street, a new version of Techno Viking Eggle. If you bear chested, I'll have a bottle of water and we can film that with a load of people. We all probably get arrested. Well, Derby isn't not. the most liberated of cities. You've got to give them the name first to be arrested. Anyway, moving on from that, uh, Rick Roman says, uh, last that lad, Rich Hitch, and then she says, the Big Bang Theory. Love it. And Rich Hitch, last that loud, Eggle, he's dead now. Raggy, not that clever then. <laughs> Too funny. We can't help dying for, man. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, you got a point, I suppose, but I don't think he actually chose it. I can remember once when we did a battle in the Civil War when I made a, a lady bicker cry mm. because I, it was the warmest day of the year and it was a massive battlefield, you know, square mile. Mm. You know, we got cannons and cavalry and infantry and there was one tree in the whole of the battlefield. Now it's 30 degrees, you're wearing wool clothing, a wool jacket and a wool waistcoat and you've got your nice shirt on, you know, ordering men about. And well, I wanted a bit of shade, I was hot and bothered, it, you know, it was a warm day. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll die and crawl over to this one tree, it was about 400 yards away. And I did this death scene where I kept on getting up and falling over, and go, Ooh, you know, doing the yeah. old wounded bit. And I was very close to the lady vicar and she just, started crying and said yeah. I've never been moved so much by watching somebody die in the battlefield. Well I must admit there were times I died on the field deliberately with a shield over me because it was raining. I remember there was one place we did and there was these old earthworks and it was raining and raining. It caught in my tash and I had to go <laughs> it was like a whale blowing out this blowhole. <laughs> Otherwise I'd have drowned. But, uh, yeah, it was good fun. Now Roman says, yes, Techno Eggle. Yeah. And now we have <coughs> promised in the past to do a Techno Viking Eggle and Braggy, but I just need somebody, a third person to come and film it for us because I, I can't be filming yeah. behind the scenes you know, doing that. And so perhaps we may have the Garden Hippies down the garden to help you do that. So if Mick and Maureen are watching, hello. Hi. I don't think they are. <laughs> they would have said, let's fit in a comment. But yes, down the garden, we've got some Garden Hippies. Garden gnomes. Well, they could be. You were very tired yesterday, wasn't it, when I spoke to them? Nice people. They are. So, which hits love your subtle little interaction with Braggy. So funny, mate. 
I mean, we, we yeah. are funny, aren't we? I mean, yeah. would we would we be so funny if we just met each other? Yeah, funny and peculiar. I think more like funny and it. mad. Yeah, I'm mad as a box of frogs on a good day. You heard it from him first. But I have not said a word. It helps. Yeah, being crazy helps. Uh, you know, I'm you know I'm I'm caring for a very elderly man with a lot of problems, which at times yeah. can be very stressful. So this also helps to you know to break up that. I remember stress. my late mother. She was in this. She wasn't. She was worse than what your dad no, is. I don't do stress. And it, it's yeah, my dad said that. Would he die of stress? stress. <laughs> uh, yeah, you see, I never like, met your dad. Yeah, he was. It was a very strange man, was my dad. Uh, he would be fascinated, and you'd feel like you were the centre. And I could say I'd won the Nobel Peace Prize, and you'd just say, "Oh yeah, yeah, whatever." Uh, I always remember about judo because I was in the All England Championships in 1968. Were you? Oh yes. Uh, got, got hammered. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> what on drink or yeah, by the karate? Yeah, by the judo, <laughs> and we had police cadets, and they just got a first grade in, and. He was fascinated. I would, my, I would see that now. Yeah. Drunken judo. And my mum said to him, your son was in the All England Championship. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, forget it. He could have been at the Olympics. Well, the guy who taught us actually was first reserve in the Olympics. Hidden views, you see. Hidden hidden depths. But, uh, yeah, I got hammered. <laughs> but I won me for heat in Derby. By the way, they owe me a medal, which I never got. And do you want to explain what getting hammered means to anybody that does not know? Battered into the ground. Uh, this guy threw me and I it, I felt I was coming out in Australia. I never know you did, did judo. Oh, yeah. I, was, oh. I did it for years. I learned something new about you. That's amazing. I have a picture of me yeah. looking like James Corden uh, that was taken when I was about 15. You know what they say, don't they? Everybody goes, Kung Fu fighting! Oh, yeah. I did it for ages. <laughs> Sorry, apologise for my singing. That's why I get a juppy hip every now and then, because I threw my hip out at doing it. But, yeah, did it for a number of years. I keep promising never to sing on camera again, but I keep finding myself now and again recording myself singing. No, I don't know. I did the other day, I did a, uh, what you call a duet, with you a did... man called Shantyman on TikTok, when uh, he sung a song... I've forgotten what song it was now. You've sung today. Well, I did sing today, yeah. yeah. So I mushed that for about t five seconds. Anyway, hey, if you can't throw it, <laughs> don't sing about it. Well, I need a new one, and this relates to this comment from Rich Hitch. I think Eggle was 007 at some point. Legend. That's me. I need a new one. Yeah. You're more like Q than 007, though. <laughs> Huge, big fella. Yeah, okay. Well. Yes, Roman says, the Wellerman Sea Shanty. Love that. Yes, uh, I was talking about this to my very good friend Paul Farah. So hello Paul, you're watching later on. Yo. And he says that I must sing and do a version of that. Yeah, well. As a guy who sung it originally, he's, he's done really well for himself. He's got yeah. a book out, he's got a record deal. You know, he's, yeah. he's going to be famous. As a yeah. Scotch guy, I can't remember his name. I'm terrible at names. Is that right, Gloria? Yeah, that's it, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to laugh, haven't you? <laughs> if you don't laugh, you cry in this life. <laughs> And laughter is a very good medicine, isn't it? Yeah, if you can laugh, life's a lot happier. I mean, you, you can often tell when I'm editing the videos because you just hear me laughing in the background yeah. because they're so funny at times. I have to literally stop and walk away because I'm laughing so much I can't carry on with the edit. So I think it's a good thing when you find yourself to be funny, Don't, isn't it? Yeah, it's getting a bit chilly, isn't it? Well, you could wear a cloak. Well, carry on. But just keep doing that, you'll warm up. Yeah, okay. Next comment, please. Next comment. Oh, wait, um, the Roman Biscotti says, I made a kitten version of that Willowman Sea Sun Chanty song. Oh, right. Ah. You'll have to come over and visit us. Yes. It'll be nice to see you. To see you nice. <laughs> That's just a dead, dead celebrity who used to say that, called Bruce Forsyth. And Roman says, a parody silly song. Yeah. I do love parodies. I mean, the... Uh, it shows a bit more imagination. That American singer is the king of... Parodies begins with a set. I forget his name now. He did uh, the Amish Paradise song. Oh God! You did. Oh, tell what names. Yeah, you are. I'll tell you. And uh, the next comment relates to this about names. And um, which hit says Derek and Gloria do Viking history? <laughs> X laughing face. Yeah. Oh well. I don't know whether it's an old age thing, but I've never been able to. I can remember faces. Yes. But I can never remember names. Yeah, definitely Gloria. Yeah. I mean, it's odd. It's 
people say to me, can you remember such an author? Who the hell is that? You know, and they say, oh, well, he had a beard. And like, oh, him. Of course, Gloria is a song. It was a, a very good song sung by the Shadows of Night, which hmm. was a 1960s psychedelic underground band. Because at one stage, they used to hang about with uh, a band from Derby called The Psychotic Reaction. And uh, they was all into this, dressed up as 1960s characters and mods and stuff and they loved that psychedelic underground scene i lived through the 60s and i can't remember any of that i mean uh, <laughs> i've been in bands and everything oh yes yeah, so i've had some good times with those guys so i can't really talk about too much on camera i used to enjoy ah yes see it so roman says weird al Yankovic. Yeah. <laughs> or yankovic yeah he's got no sad in his name <laughs> oh never mind um and richie it's me too roman it would be a blast Huh. And Roman says, oh yes, Rich. And we have a comment here from Irishman. Hello he there. says, hi guys. Hi, Hello, guys. Irishman. How are you? Hope you're keeping safe and well. You've had a beautiful country. Oh yes, yeah, so I've been to both Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland. No, I don't go to Northern Ireland. It's one of the most lovely places in the world I've ever been to. Oh, you know, beats Italy every day. Well, the people are lovely. There's reasons I won't go to Northern Ireland. Um, we did an to. event in Don Leary and... There was about 40 of us Union troops and a few Confederates and there was an Irish band on and the Irish band said, do any of you guys sing? Well, I got pushed forward because I was very well known in those days for singing and then all the locals kept on buying me Guinness and whiskey. At one stage I had about 40 pints of Guinness, I tell you not, on, mm. on the table because they loved me. I remember my dad went to uh, Northern Ireland, Bally Lumford, yes. and there was a guy called Isaac McAreevy. He'd ring up and say, hello, Will, is this yourself I'm talking to, or is it a stranger? Yes, that was the, the event when my friend, or old friend of mine, who's been playing there longer, my friend, called Frenchy, kidnapped a Frenchman. And mm. only because he was French, and he mm. got him extremely drunk. And I can remember waking up the next day in the Irish Sea, and half on the beach and half on the sea. <laughs> that was a good event. Mm. That was the event where we did the battle on, on a little park and the mm. park was full of bins and benches. Mm. There's literally 40 bins and benches we had to fight around. Mm. And there was a road and there was a railway track and the train came past. And as it saw the battle, the train stopped and they all watched the battle. It's wonderful. Oh, my experience in Southern Ireland was great. I loved it. They were nice people. But don't ask for fish and chips because they don't do it. <laughs> So uh, Roman uh, says, hello Irishman, I think I said that already, and which hits, when do I get my Viking spanner, gentlemen? I promise to wield it wisely. Good, good, yeah. Well, oh, yes. I don't know what that means, but yeah. Oh. Yes, yeah, so I'm sitting down in the live streams, it's all, you know, hurt you. Well, I'm sitting on a chair which has got slats. And... Would you like a cushion? No. I can get you one. No, I'll be all right. All right, I'm not getting a cushion for Eggle. Mustn't give in to old age and bony bottom. I always said you was an odd ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. You've heard it here first. <laughs> What's next? So, uh, next comment. Um, which hit says, could you do a stone cast for me? Or at all, Eggle? So, I can, can, but not at the moment, because my runes are in my trousers. Yes, and maybe runes are upstairs. Yeah. But... Yeah. That's one thing we're not really done on. We have covered the runes, but you've never yeah. done a live stream casting runes. Well, it's a bit difficult. Yes, yeah, so I understand that. Yeah. And you also got to try to figure out how to get the runes shown oh, and with you in the picture at the same time. Yeah. Because I want to do some sewing on camera, but it's very difficult to get me in the camera and the sewing in the camera. What well, we I need, got a sale for you. We need to figure out a way we could live stream with two cameras for that. Yeah, well. I think we need a third party. Now we have a comment here from Patone. PC right. made it at last. Is that an authentic Viking green ass at the back? Yeah, I think you'll find it is. Yes, it's, it's, it's my dad's or stroke my greenhouse, and it's full of old pines and succulents and uh, a lot of sea trays. I'm, I'm growing a lot of trees at the moment. Tomatoes? No, I'm not growing no tomatoes this tomatoes. year. You don't like tomatoes, but I love them. No, they're the devil's work. <laughs> <laughs> work of Loki. It's funny actually. When I worked at the museum, there was a guy there, and he said exactly the yeah. same thing. Yeah, they're not the work of the devil. No, they're not. They're yeah, they gorgeous. are. You have a bit of salad cream or mayonnaise with them in a. No, 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 no. And yet you like ketchup. Ketchup. Uh, yeah, I love tomato ketchup and I love tomato soup. But there's no way he could give me all the gold in the world. I would not eat a tomato. It's funny you should say that because I'm the same with black currants. Yes. I love black currants eating them. Yes. But the popular drink. Ah, God, it's 
it's just not nice. It's the texture of it. Oh no! If I get a sandwich with a tomato in, I feel insulted. I cannot eat that sandwich. <laughs> oh God! I feel insulted. This man gave me a tomato. Kill him. What I, what I think it is, I'm a fussy eater. I think it's from childhood when I was made to mm. eat things I did not like to eat, like those old potatoes with the skin on. Oh, you know, new, new potatoes. Oh, I love them. So I was always made to sit at the table until my plate was clear. When you think it was my mum that did that. When you're the youngest of five, you've got to get in well, quick, yeah. mate, otherwise you don't get it. So what I used to do is to wait until she was in the lounge and I'd go out the side and throw all the potatoes on the garage roof. Oh, dear. Hey, it's funny you should say that. At one time, I used to have a thing about salad cream sandwiches. Yes. Now, I was about eight years old. All right. And you know you have enough, you finish with I yes. ended up throwing them on top of this cabinet we had. Did you have a moustache in those days? Uh, no, I was just covered in downy fur. <laughs> and my brother Jeremy came in and there was toast up there. There were salad cream sandwiches. Yeah, I, I, I always remember that when I got fed up of them, my sister was with me and said, why aren't you them? Because they buzz. But, uh, I was a strange child. Yes, well, there you go. Right. So uh, let's go through some more of your comments. Uh, which, oh, which, oh, I got you. Hang on, which? Oh, yeah, no, I'm moderator. Right. Hey, oh, your dad's up. Yes, all right. It's probably going to bed. Oh, uh, look, he's got us. So don't wave at him, he'll be confused. He always yeah. gets confused about seeing Vikings. <laughs> so when he's 90, <laughs> don't confuse him. Anyway, we've got a comment here from Rich Hit. Last out loud, I want a spanner next to my name. Well, I've just made you a moderator. If anybody wants to be a moderator, just, just leave it in a comment and I will make you a moderator. I because no, I a moderator is just basically a blue spanner. Yeah, looking at it. It's uh, enables people to uh, monitor the chat. And if somebody mm. comes in like a troll, leaves a very offensive comment, they can hide that person uh -huh. or, or they can put them into being quiet for 10 minutes. Mm. So, Do I wave at him? He's looking at me. I wave. Wave. Wave at my dad. He's probably thinking, who the hell is that? Who's that? It's, it's, it's that weird man with a, with a moustache. Oh, Isn't that my son? Yes. You're probably wondering what we're doing. Yeah. You know. Anyway, uh, I'm going to some more of your comments. Um, so, Paton PC says, Hi at Roman Biscotti. I'm the Nonian Warrior. Any advice for sword and shield fighting in reenactment? I'm hoping to get an armor class sword soon. Well, if you're fighting with a shield, hold it close to you. Yes. Beware at the top. Because that always comes back and whacks you in the nose. I think if you want to take advantage of, of, of being a good swordsman, the bigger the shield you got, the better. Yeah. So, you know, I recommend 33 to 36 inches in shield size. It will be heavy, and but if, your arm will get used to it. If you're fighting someone, aim from there to just above yes. your legs. Because otherwise, you're going to end up speaking with a high, high voice or blinding somebody. It was always my knees to get whacked. Yeah. Take care. Well known for whacking my knee. There was a way of, I, he always follows the same way, he always tries to circle around you. And if you see a spear coming close to your private parts, just try to lean up and ride mm. it rather than have it hit them, because it does hurt. Yeah, I remember a pal of mine who shall remain nameless, used to go in too hard, so if you hit them there, yes. it tends to slow them down, and it makes you open your hand. Yes, I just made a couple more people... Uh, uh, moderators, it really sure. does help on the channel, and uh, we'll make all you guys moderators. Do, He's just glazing the curtains. Oh. Have you not heard? My dad is a most excellent curtain puller. Well, there you are. He's fantastic at doing curtains. Oh, good lad. He could have got a job at Parliament doing that. It's yeah. marvellous. Yeah, okay. I can't do curtains like my dad does. Who can? Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, there you go, as long as he's happy. So, um, yes, you'll probably wonder what we're doing. So, we'll get to your comments. So, I just waved at them again. Oh yes, so moderators can also post links in the chat. So if we talk about a subject like, you know, um, the Vikings film, somebody yeah. can put a link up to like the wiki page of that oh, or okay. internet movie database. This is an awesome, awesome site. Now Witch Hit says, I've made it! Viking Warrior! Last out loud. Good on you. And uh, Roman says, congratulations Witch. And uh, Roman Biscotti, please hit that like, folks, and feel free to share this out. Oh yes, it always helps. Yeah. And I do, I do confess, I'm rubbish at sharing things. It's one of my weaknesses in life, I think. I'm just not very good at sharing things. I, don't, I always share my beer, and if I see Eggo with no money, he can always have a fiver on me any day. Mm, mm, not the day I haven't got a fiver. Oh. <laughs> That's me, Bulgy. I think you're IOU. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, but yeah. Now, um, Richard, no links coming from me, only love for the brand and for the men that 
give it to us, Braggy and Eggle. Cheers. Oh yeah, but let's not forget TK as well. Yeah. Because he, he he started this channel and he's a big part of it. And he caters for he's got a different market. Yes he has. Which gives us diversity. And you know, there are people who like dramatic saga type stories. Yes, he's and a that's fine. He is an actor. Yes, well, I want him to do some historical content because what he knows about the Angles and the Saxon, you know, uh, yeah. it's just astonishing. He's got a lot of knowledge. He's a very knowledgeable chap and uh, he's a very dramatic person. Some people like that and that's, we cater for all tastes. Yes, we do. Tastes and, you know, if not everybody likes us messing about or doing no. historical, they want drama and that's where Taikir comes in. Yes, and you yeah, know, and uh, look to him. I hope to be filming with him in the future. It's been very difficult. And not to forget good old Neil. No, there's another uh, person who's added to the channel mm. a few videos, that's Neil Sigmundson. He's good very luck. famous for being bold with a big beard and uh, he just shut the door on us. <laughs> oh, well. We can't get in the house now, I'm locked out. Oh, oh look, I've got a ladder, I can get up the balcony. They're good for you, because all my clothes are upstairs. Eggle, hey, you're going back as a Viking tonight, because we're locked out of the house. Dear, oh dear. So, be all right. Anyway, uh, Roman says, uh, ta-da, that's out loud. And uh, Roman also says, if, and if anybody would like to donate to these wonderful hosts, she's included our PayPal donation link. Cheers. Which is a new thing I've set yeah. up. Oh, well, there you I go. I don't think anybody's ever sent us any money on PayPal yet. But, you know, it's, it. it's always a nice thing to see. And, and, you know, we have spent a lot of money to get yeah. the channel going. You know, I have. Yeah, well, but, you have. I ain't got enough money. It's just a wonderful thing. And for me as a creator, I found it so frustrating yeah. at the beginning when we had such a basic camera. That was one of the most yeah. biggest frustrations I had. But you've got to start somewhere. Yeah. So uh, Roman says, yay, Rich. And Rich says, done, Roman, light. And which is, I find Tyrk here hard to watch. No offence, Braggy, I know he's your friend. Yeah, well, that's, horses you know. for courses, that's yeah. why, you know, I mean, he is good at what he does. Yes. You know, he can't complain about it. He's a very knowledgeable guy, a very pleasant guy when you know him. But, um, you know. Now, we have a comment here from a new commenter, Mythic Law. Mm. So, hello and welcome to the channel. And they say, video evidence that ancient folk had tablets. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. Hey but you know, look at some of the, you know, the, the um, some of the tablets mm. with the ancient languages on, like the Rosetta Stone, fascinating stuff. And yeah. there's some really good videos uh, on the British Museum YouTube page on that. Yeah. Or go so, to the British Museum if you're able. It's a great place. So Irishman says, guys, when you get a chance, check out the Irish Medieval History channel. Some interesting vids there. He also does collaborations with other similar channels perhaps with you in the future see that is a rich vein of history which tends mm. to get overlooked you know Does. brian baru people like that yes and uh, there is amazing stories and the way they tell it and it's not i've heard irish storytellers and they have a beautiful yeah, language do, yes. yeah and yeah we just don't get with the english which well definitely know. so i mean one of the stories i want to learn is the battle of the trees yeah. so uh you know yeah Okay. So, well, you... if we could learn that, yeah. that'd be great. Robert Graves. Yes. So yeah. I've got lots of books on Irish myths, but as always, I've got to have the energy oh, and time really. to read. I've got the White Goddess, and, then, and I tried reading yeah. it. I got to the first chapter, and after that, my brain was pulled. Then you got to understand the pronunciation, yeah. and then you also got to, you're trying to read something and learn it at the same time. Yeah. You're getting cold, Eggle. I'm getting cold. It must be... And I've got no idea what time it is. Well, well it's getting just past seven o'clock, so we'll go for a couple more minutes and then we're going to leave. Because I don't, I don't want Eggle to get pneumonia and die tomorrow. Yeah, I also want to get in the house. Yes. If Daddy's locked up. So, um, oh, we'll be back. So, Roman uh, Biscotta says, hello, Myth Mythic. And then Witch Hitch, why does Tyrk here not do much content? But he's always wor he works hard. His, his job. Yeah, I mean, he has a very physical job. Yes. And he has his own style. It's a unique style. He's, he's a very intelligent bloke. Very, very. Uh, he, and he has a very narrow focus as a result. But, you know, don't underestimate him. He's a very knowledgeable chap. Very nice chap if you ever meet him, which I hope you will. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's just the way he does things, isn't it? So Rich Hit says, TK would be so much better if he spoke in his own voice, I feel. 
You may say that. I couldn't possibly comment. Yes, he does advertise. <laughs> I mean, I certainly learnt some of my techniques, but also because I had a gaming channel before yeah. this, I also learnt how to emphasise more. You know, an actor. I had to emphasise what mm. you want to understand me with my speech. I think it's the way he was taught drama because he did a degree in English language well, and drama. This is one of the problems when he doesn't. You don't come and film. You don't sit down like we do, and you don't discuss it. Where we built up this friendship over the years and. The friendship of being on camera together. Well, I've I've acted on films and I've acted on stage, but this is a different ball game. Yes. and it's what you've taught me. If oh, ever, oh, yes. Being honest. But I think you know, if if TK started filming and doing a few live streams with me mm. and probably yourself, mm. then it will get to understand the field of things more better as well. Well, horses for courses. If that's how he does it, that's how he does I mean, it. And I like his content. I really enjoy what he's what he's done, and it's a pleasure to I've edit it. I've learned a lot from him. So, you know. but uh, we'll see. <laughs> So, uh, uh, so uh, yes. So, just going back, Mythic Law. Someone just sent you your first PayPal donation. Oh, thank oh, you. Thank you for that. Yeah. You know, we're going to get some of these donations. We're going to go out and have a meal to celebrate. I God think. bless you. A couple of pints. We'll get <laughs> Eggle some steak and chips. Ooh, I remember steak. <laughs> so, Donanian Warrior says, "What do you think of other Viking YouTubers like the Walsh Vikings?" Well. You know, it's that's there. It's there for everyone. Oh yeah. Good luck to you all. I showed you his page the other yeah. day. And <clears throat> you know, everybody has a way of doing it, and variety is the spice of life. And you know, good luck to you, mate. Good luck to you. Oh yes, yeah, so it's great that these reenactors are making content. Perhaps we've yeah. inspired of you because we have been doing this for four years, nearly. Yeah. And you know, when was that? Yeah, nearly this year. Wow. I mean, um, you know, and, and, and these are the kind of content that they just yeah. do one video a week and he puts a lot of effort into his videos. Good luck to you, mate. Uh, I don't know if you're watching us, but good luck. But from a content creator yeah. point of view, I find it very frustrating when we put out a lot of decent content, but yet a lot of these channels that are very similar have ten times the subscribers we do. Uh, don't so, sweat it, mate. But, it's just got to kick. And I don't often yeah. worry about the subscriber numbers. Yeah. It's just having fun for us. It's the most mm, important well, thing. You know, that's the thing, having fun. You know, good luck to everybody. So Mythic Law says, put on some Gambersons, uh, FFS. <laughs> I could do it one now, Would actually. Would you like me to go and get you a cloak, old man? Uh, I'd rather go. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we'll do a couple more comments, then we're going to end this, because it's getting cold, you can uh, tell. And also, I'm getting bothered, because I think your dad's locked us out. No, it's all right. I can get in the ass. I've got a ladder, and I used to be a, a climber. Good for you. So, no, don't worry, I can bang on the window until he wakes up. Probably think the Vikings are in there. So uh, Mythic Law says, um, make your moderator Mythic. I'm drinking some warm tea as I watch this. I'm very jealous. I had to throw my tea away. I had a fly in it, and I wasn't that hungry today. And um, which hits? What films you acted in, Eggle? Uh, there is. Oh, I acted in a film for. Oh God! It was uh, Viking Centre up north. It, it was for. Uh, Look out north it was when we did that. I'm sure we're it was. doing that, but also I was there was a museum where the Vikings were. And I <laughs> I worked out I was over two hundred years old by the end of the film. Uh, but whether they still got got it or not, I've done all kinds. I've worked with a guy called Richard Felix where I was a jail warder and I've also been an assassin in one of his films. Yes, we did uh, it was the hanging of Dave Courtney. Remember that? Do you remember when you turned around and there was these two guys dressed like dwarves? <laughs> and there was you with your Civil War jacket on. And I'm thinking, Pretending to be a priest, yeah. policeman, really. And I'm thinking, what have I done here? And they had all these people behind me, and my line was saying, You know, you can't have the dead body! <laughs> oh, look, the door's open. Yeah. The gods are on our side. No, no. I just Ex read... Exitus, the god of ent exits. <laughs> oh, yes. And uh, a couple more comments were going. So, Mythic Law says, Pints better be in the mix. Yeah. The money comes from me. Wine is better. But I'll let you drink the grass water. More wine for me. Well, yeah. we will go out and we'll go down to a, uh, a Weatherspoons mm. one day um, when, it, when it's open. And we'll, we'll have a nice meal on, on the yeah. money you sent us. And thank you. Witherspoon. Roman says, laughs out loud. Yeah. Roman says, Braggy, we'll scale the house to save the day. Okay. I used to be a, a mountaineer and a rock climber and a caver. I think you're all right now. <laughs> and Mythic Law says, if that doesn't work, he can just light the house on fire. That'll keep him warm. Well, yeah. I think my dad will approve. Yeah, I don't think you, you would approve either. And I hate to tell you how much his house is worth. Yeah, I can imagine. Oh, yeah. 
Um, I'm not looking forward to the bill. Anyway, Roman says, no fire, last little hour, his dad's inside. Yeah. Yes, Magnar, the mighty. Rich Hitch, don't light the fire inside, Roman. I meant the garden. All right. It could have been around the fire pit, Eggle, being warm. Coulda, shoulda, coulda. I, I, I spent ages building that. And Rich Hitch, uh, I was bonded to Mythic. And uh, Rich Hitch, Eggle needs a hot cup of cocoa. Mm. And at that point, we're going to say goodbye now, folks, because oh, yeah. it's getting my, late. My little nose is frozen. Yeah, it's not, it's blue. <laughs> okay. You're like, you're like uh, that, that Viking dude, got yeah. Bluetooth named after him. A little Robin. Robin. Okay, well, thanks. Thanks for your comments, thanks for your donations. Stay groovy. This will be live in a bit on the old channel. Okay. Better get to share it. Right. Yeah, go one inside. Ooh. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.